So welcome all to this subject overview and scrutiny committee two, which is being convened as a hybrid meeting. The meeting is being recorded and will be available via the council's website to be viewed subsequently. Everyone participating in the meeting will access it either from the council chamber, civic offices, Angel Street, Bridge End, or from remote locations. Should I, as chair, experience any technical difficulties during the meeting, Councillor Amanda Williams will step in and take over temporarily as chair in my absence. Please can everyone ensure that mobile phones are switched off or switched to silent mode. Members will have received an electronic copy of the agenda and I will ask officers to present a brief summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Officers and members are reminded to refer to the page numbers contained in the public version of the agenda report pack. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting and those who, those, those who are speaking may switch their cameras on at that point, but I would ask that with the exception of myself as chairperson, at all other times you keep your cameras and microphones switched off as this will help minimise any background noise and interference. Whether attending in the chamber or remotely, if any members or officers wish to raise a point or question, they should press hands up icon on the screen at the top right hand side of the Microsoft Teams window and I will come to you in the order I receive requests. If you're in the chamber, please switch on the microphone on your desk and speak directly into the mic, allowing those who are remote to hear you clearly. Please lower your hand once you've finished speaking. The instant messaging chat button has been disabled for this meeting. Please do not use your microphone until I invite you to do so. Officers from Scrutiny will be supporting the meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout its duration and where necessary will mute those not being used. I will ask officers to introduce themselves when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure microphones and cameras are switched off when not in use. I will now proceed to the agenda. <coughs> So we have item one, apologies for absence. I will now ask the scrutiny officer to announce the apologies for absences received. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, apologies for absence have been received from Councillor Paul Davis, Councillor Paula Ford, Councillor Ross Penhale Thomas, Councillor Alan Watson, and Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, did you want to come in with some apologies? Yes, please. I need to apologise that I need to leave at 12 because I have another meeting. No problem. Item two, declarations of interest. If any member has an interest to declare in any matter on the agenda, please click on the raise hand icon and I will come to you in turn to, for you to declare your interest. Councillor Gabby. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, it's a personal interest in item number four. I am an MP carer. Councillor Hughes. I person interest in the same item as I too am an unpaid carer. No problem, thank you. Anyone else? Lovely, moving on. So item three, approval of minutes. Can I have a mover and seconder for each of the minutes, please? I'll move this. And do I have a seconder? I second. Thank you, Della. And that's for both of them. You both content to do that, yes? Yep, yeah, that's fine. Fabulous. Thank you. Lovely. Moving on. Item number four, support for the young carers and adult young carers. I will ask the Corporate Director for Social Services and Wellbeing to briefly introduce the report. I will then call upon members who indicate they wish to speak by clicking on the raise hand icon in turn. Thank you, Claire.
Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Um, in line with the sort of instructions that we've had, I won't go through the report in any detail at all this morning, other than really just to, to welcome partners here this morning. Um, I think it's great, isn't it, to show that whole council and partnership commitment um, to carers in Bridge End, both adult carers and young carers. It's a really important topic. Any of us can um, find ourselves in a caring position at any point in, in our lives. If this had been six months ago, I would have been declaring an, an interest as a, as a carer. And I think until you are a carer and you're in those shoes, you can't really understand, can you, the impact that it has on every aspect of, of, of your life. And therefore, it does require that joined up approach, doesn't it, to, to caring responsibilities. Um, and I think the numbers um, set out in the report of carers in Bridgend and indeed across Wales are vast and often underestimated and under identified. So without further preamble, um, I will allow you to, to chair and take us through the, the meeting. Thank you, Claire. And I think you're right as well. There are so many of us that have caring responsibilities uh, within the county. So it is it's very important, whether we're young carers or carers of um, elderly um, relatives, etc. as well, or even just adult relatives as well. So thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to welcome our young carer um, who is in the chamber with us, which is Ellie Jenkins. And Ellie is also the ambassador in the Young Carers Network, I believe, as well, aren't you? So um, welcome, Ellie, and um, I think you're well placed to help us understand the lived experience. Um, and I know that the councillors and the members will have a few questions for you as well about that. So hopefully you'll be able to let us know exactly what your experience has been in, in that regard. So welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I'd also like to welcome our partners who we have online with us. I think we have partners from Halo and Arwen as well who are with us. So I'd like to welcome you as well. It's lovely to see you here with us today and to hear your experiences as well. So thank you very much for joining us. And with that, I'm going to take us through to the um, uh, report now. So I know councillors do have a number of questions and I did want to, sorry, if you bear with me one second once I find my page. Um, I did want to um, ask a few questions of our um, attendees first, because I understand quite a few of the attendees have to, to leave first. So I'm going to bring in our councillors to ask questions, if that's OK, first off, and um, ask about lived experience. So I think, kicking off, we had um, a couple of questions in that regard, didn't we? So members? you'd like to put your hands up if you had any questions about the lived experience, please. Councillor Williams. Thank you very much. And I'd like to welcome our guests. Um, I think um, being a carer, no matter how old you are, is a very difficult and very tough um, job to do. Um, but being a young carer, when you've got your life ahead of you and you've got everything else you're trying to do, um, it must be extremely difficult. And um, I want to say thank you to everyone who does that and supports family members and friends by caring for them. Um, specifically about young carers, um, I don't know if this is an experience with our guests today, but from this report, I noted that education was missing. There was nothing about any support for education. Now, a lot of our young carers would be potentially in school or college or pursuing either the start of their careers or, or they would be in education. So I wondered if we could have an overview on what support is out there from an education perspective and does it mean that you're able to go to school or college or and continue to with your education whilst you're caring for individuals please thanks Kelly would you like to come in on that um as a young carer I attended a post school comprehensive school and um, that was my secondary school and I didn't receive any support in the way of being a young carer however I know as of late both my sisters who also attend that school have also received some form of support so I do know that there is support out there however when I was in that situation there wasn't I have recently gone on to 
working and leaving education. However, I know that obviously there is support in different colleges and schools from talking to my other young care ambassadors who we um, work with. Lovely, thank you. Amanda, did you want to come back on that? Sorry, Councillor Williams. Thank you very much. It's good to know that there is support out there now. And I think for the benefit of our committee, it would be nice if no, I know we've got nobody from education here for, for completeness, if we could get an update as to what support is out there now and so that we can have a look at whether it is sufficient support. Thanks. Thank you. Claire, would you be able to um, look at pulling together some sort of report on that, please? Thank you. Yeah, th thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think in terms of, of support, I would ask perhaps Andrew to come in and talk a little bit about the, the support that we've got in, in place. Um, we, we've talked about the, the Young Carers Ambassadors, and that's something that we're looking to, to make sure is in place across all of our schools um, across the county borough. I think the first step is about if identify, identification, if I can get the, the, the word out, um, in terms of making sure that um, schools and, and all partners indeed are aware of, of um, young carers. And then once we identify it, making sure that there is that access to, to support at the earliest possible um, juncture. And as we know, Education and Family Support Directorate in the Council have got a range of preventative services available through schools, and those would equally be available um, to young carers. In terms of specifics, there is a, a service which is commissioned through the um, Children and Communities grant um, by colleagues in, in the Chief Exec's Directorate um, through Whitehead Ross, which is referenced in, in, in the paper. Um, we've also, um, and Andrew and, and team, have been doing a lot of work around the Young Carers Network to support young carers to, to come together. Um, and um, through that network, we've been co-producing with Young Carers the Young Carers Card. And the whole point in having a card is that it does something. Um, and that card then is about access, not just to, to support, but to a range of offers as well through partners. And, and we've got a number of those partners on the call. So if there's further briefing that, that's required, I'm very happy to pick that up with colleagues across the council. Thank you. Andrew, can I bring you in on that, please? Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think speaking on behalf of my service area, which is, is prevention and wellbeing, um, there is a role for everybody to play in supporting um, our young carers. I think education is an environment that has been useful for us in helping to identify where young carers are. I think certainly pre-pandemic, uh, we, we were probably more um, active in this space of work, working with schools collectively. I think there's there's a rebuilding process going on. I think Bridgend was probably the first local authority in Wales to have had um, a young carers card scheme before the national scheme had identified. But as you say, when we engaged young carers, it counted for not a lot if it didn't raise awareness and, and, and enable support. So so by working differently, and we are working with, with schools, we're probably quite heavy on secondary and need to go down to to our primary schools. There's probably about 300 young carers that we've, we've managed to, to find and connect with. Um, a lot of young people who are looking after family probably do not identify as as a young carer. It's what they do to support their their family. But taking schools with us on on this journey, I think to hear the voices of young carers and this is some uh, significant work going on in terms of group work being established in schools where young carers have voice and then leadership of school connecting into that. And I guess looking at how schools would then support any pupil facing a broad range of challenges and recognizing you know i i guess ellie you 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 were linking with those 300 young carers everyone has a different story you know in different circumstances so it's about that you know power of one a person-centered approach also but i think the key message of having more empathy more understanding and a recognition that, that some people will need additional additional support probably at an early start this 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 journey but the numbers have been quite significant and the leadership aspect i think that claire's describing we are now using people like ellie and and others who who came and spoke on world social work day to to take this agenda forward um and help us i suppose understand what what help looks like for for young carers and in different settings 
Thank you, Andrew. Um, Ellie, just coming back to you as well, because obviously I know a little bit about this. My um, own children um, have gone through as young carers, and I think they probably went through the system at a time when perhaps there wasn't as much support. And I do know that um, they've vocalised to me in the past that they felt as if their voice wasn't heard. And certainly um, I had two boys, one of whom had a, a medical condition and the other was a young carer for him. And um, the one who was the young carer felt disadvantaged and unheard throughout his journey as a young carer because things that were inequitable were things like the um, son with the disability obviously got extra time in exams and things, but the young carer wasn't offered that, although he was often disturbed in his sleep during the night and things, so he really struggled with that. So he felt that there was a, an inequitability there for young carers. And I, I just wondered if that had been addressed and you felt that was being sufficiently addressed um, in the last sort of couple of years as well. Because of course we've had the pandemic as well, that's had a, an impact. But um, I just wondered what your opinion was on that, please. Thank you. So um, actually, I'm in the same situation. My, I care for my younger brother who has complex medical needs, and so do my two sisters. We also care for him. And I know that in the past couple of years, support there has been a lot more support since I have left school in the past two years. And I know that my sister has been able to get that extra support if she needed help with um, work and extra time for exams. There is that. Um, connection now with the schools where they are receiving that help because I know my younger sister really does struggle with the school and obviously my brother gets extra support which he doesn't and there is that support out there and I've noticed that it makes her a lot happier going to school and she now enjoys going to school she doesn't feel as behind and yeah I do believe there is that support in schools now and at lunch times they go and they can have young carer meetings and there's certain things they can address with a young carer teacher that they have on board on site that can be raised and um, I know that the card also has many benefits that she wears in school and can show when all teachers are aware of what she goes through. And, and yeah, it's just a lot better now. Fantastic. That's really heartening to hear because that's um, it's a massive step forward because you will know personally as well, obviously. I think you've probably fallen into the same time bracket as, as my uh, son did as well. So it's good to hear that there's those improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right, can I bring Councillor Gebby in, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, most schools have a young carers policy. So if there are young carers in school, it gives them sort of extra assistance. I'm really pleased to hear that your experience is better now that extra support is going in. In relation to timeframes around exam, that needs to be applied for by the education department. So if somebody does want extra time for their exams, it wouldn't be us as we, it's not, we can represent and advocate, but that's not the same thing. And it would be education that would need to do that on, on behalf of the school. Thank you. Yeah, and I think as well, if you're a student, it's quite daunting to have to approach the education board and do that. So I think that advocation is, is hugely important as well. Thank you. Um, Councillor Williams? Thanks very much. I've got a couple more questions, if possible, please. Um, um, I'm sorry. In in that case, I noticed that Claire just whipped her finger in very quickly, just as you were about to start. Can I bring Claire in instead yeah. and then bring your questions in after? Thank you. Cheers, Claire. Yeah, it, it was just to join up, if I may, Chair, with the Young Carers Assessment. So obviously, um, from a social services and wellbeing perspective, um, all young carers have got that right to a carers assessment. And if the sort of things which Councillor Gebby was, was identifying were identified in that young carers assessment, then it's again that whole system and, and, and joined up approach, isn't it, for um, colleagues within social service and wellbeing. And we've got our young carers development officer sitting with, with Rayanna in the multi-agency safeguarding hub um, if that's identified through that assessment then they would work with colleagues in education and family support to make sure those applications were made so just to give that assurance about the, the joiner fabulous and it seems like that it has improved in the last couple of years as that significantly so thank you for that um councillor williams Thanks very much. I've got a couple of questions for Ellie, if possible. Um, first of all, I'm so impressed with the confidence that you're showing in these questions, because us as councillors, I know we find it quite daunting, um, particularly coming into the chamber to ask um, questions. Um, so you've said that there's been a, an improvement in the last couple of years. 
I'm assuming that since COVID, which would have been extremely difficult, it was extremely difficult for all families. But if you're caring for someone as well, it would have been extremely difficult for you. Um, so I wondered if firstly it's improved since then and how you coped during COVID. Were there, were there any areas of support that you could have? And I also wanted to ask, it might be a difficult question, but do you think there are areas where we still need to improve or what can we do better, please? Thanks. Um, obviously, COVID was a difficult time for everyone, especially with those having to care. I know in my household, um, there was just us and obviously my brother and having to care and also be stuck in the house, not able to get out and him go to school. And it was hard for my mum not having that respite. We all had to kind of work together to focus and try and make the most and make the most of every day. So we were, you know, fighting with each other constantly and getting on top of each other. And obviously dealing with his own routine and all his medical conditions, obviously half of that is normally done on school and um, his learning obviously needed to be kept up with as well. So it was quite a difficult time and I found help um, keeping to a routine of what needed to be done when really did help. And we all kind of chipped in and helped along with that. So my mum could go off and do the shopping, we would step in and different things like that. And getting out for a walk really did help. Um, I know during COVID there were some online lessons and be also some um, online like sessions where you could just sit and talk to teachers and they really did help where you can just talk about what you've done in the day or if there's any support you needed um, um, and during COVID. Um, what was the other question? Sorry. Um, I believe I, I believe it was about improvements. Yes. Um, I don't think there's much improvement that needs to be done since the card has been enrolled. Um, I found that there were a lot more benefits for young carer, a lot more than when I first realised I was a young carer. So already the improve improvements have been massive and I have found that there's such by having the network is such a massive thing for young carers and we all value that so much that it's already improved so much from what it was that any improvements would be amazing because it's already amazing as it is. Thank you, fantastic. Um, does that suffice for you, Councillor Williams? It does, yes, thank you very much. Lovely. Councillor Gebby? Thanks very much, Chair. I just thought I'd make members aware that Arwen have done a documentary on carers. It's unpaid and paid carers. I know because I contributed to the documentary. I don't know when it's going to be released, but it gives you a good insight into what happens, how it happens and what we can do to help people more. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Gebby. Claire? Yeah, I, it's, it's so lovely to, to hear Ellie and to, to hear her speaking so positively. I would say there's always things that we can do better. Um, and I would highlight that there's probably still a lot of young carers out there who aren't identifying themselves as young carers. So, so what is heartening this morning and to hear it um, from Ellie is that when we are identifying young carers, the things that are in place via the card, via the network, are now working more effectively and that support via schools. And, and as I said earlier, that join up, up with social services is, is much improved. But there'll still be lots of young carers who we need to, to support to, to come forward and access that support. Um, we've got a, a, a board in place with um, colleagues in education and family support called the Early Health and Safeguarding Board. And we agreed at our last meeting Meeting that we would bring together a young carer steering group across the council and, and partners because there's lots of different um, partners as we see this morning and parts of the council involved to, to, to keep doing that sort of ambition what next so that we are committed to continuously improving and, and certainly not sitting on on our laurels and thinking that everything um, is perfect out there because we still know that there's a lot to do but I would highlight that identification as a, as a key priority for us moving forward chair. Andrew? Somewhere. Yeah, there's a phrase within the report and it's used in sort of Welsh Government reports of, of, of a life beyond caring. And I think whilst we're talking about sort of academic support and also the, the caring related duties, one of the big things that comes through is the aspirations of young carers to have, dare I say, not normal lives and opportunities. And that's been a big part of the work that young carers have led themselves in identifying you know the, the the range of things and their voices and choices in in that respect 
and I think it is that overall balancing of things. I think we, you know, whilst we are working with with schools, and there is you know, there is some fantastic work going on with schools. Um, there's progress to be made in 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 some areas, but things like the UR Value Days, schools leading themselves on sort of the group work and the visibility um, of young carers, you know, within their establishments. But but for us, it's very much about connecting our young carers in, into life. And, and those things are because they're time poor and transport poor in a lot of cases. How do we simplify some of those things within a, a broader overview of need? Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, I'm aware as we um, move on here that there are some of our partners online who have joined us today who um, I believe they may have some carers with them. Is it adult carers that are with them? Mm -hmm. I think. So I just wondered if um, there were any of our partners online who wanted to add to this as well, and um, if there were any carers online with them who wanted to add their lived experience. I know this morning on the news it's been um, quite prevalent about uh, um, carers who look after individuals with dementia and Alzheimer's, and um, I just wondered if there was anything to say in that regard. So, Ryan, can I bring you in, please? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Unfortunately, some of our carers haven't been able to join us this morning due to medical issues. Um, I do have um, one carer of her husband has uh, has dementia, um, Dana Gould. She can join us over uh, by via phone if that's acceptable. That's fine. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, if you could just give me a moment, I'll just try and get Gaina um, onto the call. Not a problem, we'll wait. Thank you. Andrew, do you want to pop your hand down as well? I think you've got a legacy hand up. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so Gaina is just on the phone. Hopefully you can hear her okay. So Gaina joined our six week replacement care program. Oh, sorry, our, our care respite program, which has included um, exercise and diet, nutrition, mindfulness elements, but also some replacement care. Um, we've been part of this since last January. Um, most of the participants originally came to us via our Feel Good for Life, that's our dementia friendly program. However, we have expanded that to support other types of carers. Um, I think we've seen some great outcomes uh, around that, uh, which uh, I can certainly go over, but perhaps um, it's best if uh, I I'll allow Gaina to give some of her experiences. Thank you, Ryan. Welcome, Gaina. Hope you're all, all all right there. <laughs> Lovely to hear from you. Hi. Um, if you just want to run through your, your lived experience with us very briefly and just let us know, um, you know, how you're being supported, if you feel there's improvements could be made, if you feel that improvements have been made and you, you wish to make that noted, then please do go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just a little background for you. My husband, Martin, was diagnosed at 61 with um, dementia, with Alzheimer's, and uh, he's 67 at the moment. Uh, he's recently admitted to Glam Reed Hospital as an emergency uh, and subsequently has now gone into a home. So um, my experience with at the centre there was when Martin was at home with me. Um, and so I'll just read what I've written here for you. Um, all the participants that I spoke to while I was on the course agreed that the course was very much needed and appreciated by all carers. The fact that the centre had provided a carer for Martin was invaluable, as I would certainly wouldn't have been able to attend it without that provision. The care we were allocated was wonderful with him, and um, she's kept in touch since to inquire about, um, about his progress. The course itself was suited to everyone's needs, um, the exercise, nutrition and relaxation classes were at a level that was appropriate for all ages and abilities of the carers. 
um, we made new friends and um, quite a few of us have kept in touch um, since uh, where we discuss things like uh, care home recommendations of homes we've since visited. Um, the venue I thought was perfect, great car parking, there, is, there was refreshments welcome during the meeting um, with a chance to speak to the others there you know, halfway through the, the course. Um, the downstairs cafeteria in the sports centre um, was was great because I was able to settle Martin with um, the carer over a cup of tea and a cake before we separated then for the course. Uh, Jeff was always available before the course date for any queries and was very respectful, understanding and informative of any queries I had prior to the course. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to ask me or that I can help you with. Fantastic, Gaynor. That's a real insight there. So I'll ask members if they've got any questions at all. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, members? It looks like you might get off easy here, Gaynor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the one thing I would ask of you is that it was great for me because I drive. So I was able to bring Martin. So I suppose on behalf of anyone, um, uh, plus like my friend that lives locally, we live in, she lives in my stake. I live in Shanghai night. She lives in my stake. Um, I'm not sure how she would get down there and back. I was one, just wondering if there was any availability for transport for um, future courses for participants. Fantastic. I'll I'll bring that question across to Councillor Gebby, I think, um, or yes. Councillor Good. I'm not sure which one of them would like to answer it. So, um, <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you, and I would make every attempt to get them transport to wherever they needed to go. It should be part of their assessment. That any anything that they they need should be part of their assessment. So it should be arranged for them, Chair. Yeah. Claire? Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure they, they would greatly uh, appreciate transport being provided. Fantastic. I'm just going to bring Claire in, Claire Marchant, who's the okay. Director of Social Services. Yeah, it's just that join up again with carers assessment, um, mm. because often I think, and, and I've spoken to, to lots and lots of carers about this over the years, that perhaps carers say, well, why, why do I need an assessment? Mm. Um, you know, we, we try to be very good at offering them. It, it's how that offer is, is made, I think, is, is really important. But if that need for transport is identified during the assessment, it's one of those things then that comes out of the assessment, isn't it? To look at how we most effectively provide that um, through community transport, through, through some people might need a taxi for but for example, but it's all part of how then we support that carer to, to access that, that course, which obviously is so so important as Gaynor has set out. Fantastic. Yes. I'm just going to bring Councillor Miss Good in as well, Gaynor. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks, Gaynor. I just wanted to flag that it's, it's worth as well um, speaking to your local, uh, local community coordinators, which we do currently have it in the north of the borough, which is across the three valleys. And I know from, from my valley in the Ogmore, they, they've been a really remarkable help to a lot of our carers within within the Ogmore Valley and I'm sure that they could uh, signpost and, and help with a lot of these questions that, that any of you or your, your friends have. Absolutely, thank you. Um, Councillor Williams? Okay. Thanks very much. I just wanted to ask the same question that I asked Ellie um, about areas of, for improvement. Is there any way that they um, gain the things we could improve the services and the support we provide for carers. Thanks. Thank I, you, I, I've got to be honest with you, I think that the service you, you uh, supply in the Bridgend and surrounding areas is absolutely wonderful. The support that I had from um, Lucy in the Alzheimer's Society, um, from Andrea in Glanbreed has been really wonderful Sarah in the carer centre and now this the um the provision of this in in the recreation centre i really do think that we have the most wonderful service in the um the bridge end area i from what i can understand it's very very different 
to places like the Talbot area. Um, I'm originally from Langwinsey, so um, there's things that are lost up there, you know, uh, have they got it in their areas? And they, it, it's just, if people know where to get uh, get um, information to signpost them to the, to the um, facilities that you have in the Bridgend area, I do think it's absolutely wonderful, and I try myself for to um, inform everyone I know of these services that are available to us. So I would like to thank you for for all the new. Sorry. Are you okay there, Jaina? Behalf of the area. No, Gaynor, absolutely. We don't, want, we don't wish to upset you, Gaynor, at all. And do you know what? Thank you so much as well, because it sounds as if you really are a wonderful community champion for us as well. Because one of the difficulties that we face is letting people know how to access these yes. services. So to have somebody like yourself, who quite clearly has you know, benefited from this service and has found it to be helpful, you really are one of our stars, quite frankly. So thank you I very much. So I am so passionate about dementia. My fa a lot of it in my family, my father, my grandmother, four of my mother's siblings, and now Martin, you know, at his young age of 61. It's a real passion of mine. And when I, um, when I retired from Photographer's Hospital, I did a Dementia Champions course with Lam Reed. Yeah. Uh, this is a quick dementia champions course in Glanmead and that was wonderful and that has given me so much extra insight into it and so I like to promote this wherever I can. And Gaynor, I'm hoping keep promoting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm hoping to help with the, um, go on the courses, um, on some of the courses that may be going on just to give my perspective as a carer myself, rather than it being from the just from the teachers, but from being a carer. So I'm hoping to give some input on some of the some of the courses that may be going on. Yes, you're spot on there as well. And being a carer yourself, you have a very different insight. I know because I cared for my father with vascular dementia. Mm. You do have a very very different insight as well. Definitely. So, I'm just going to very quickly bring Councillor Gebby in and then I'm going to come to Councillor Maxine Lewis who's got a question for you as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. I think one of the things that I would say to you is it's nice to hear that co-production is at the heart of what we do. It's really important that our service, our services are designed with people who use them, who have that lived experience, otherwise they don't work. So it's really nice to hear in the end. We're particularly doing that very well. And I hope that it, uh, I would encourage you to continue engaging with us because it's really useful to us when we're designing those provisions. Thank you very much, Chair. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lewis, can I bring you in for a question? Good morning, Gaina. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. How long was it before you found out about um, what Halo was offering and where did you find the information? Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to think now. Was it from, I think it was from Andrea in Glam Reed. Um, I, I, because as I said, I'm part of the, of the Carer Centre and I've had so much involvement with um, Andrea Shepherd in Glam Reed. So it was either from Sarah or Andrea in Glam, Glam Reed that I had the information. I think it's from, yes, I think it's from Andrea Shepard in Glamry. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lewis, did you want to come back? I just want to say thank you and um, just keep promoting. A hundred percent. I certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting so passionate about it. Definitely. No, we could, we could use you as one of our adverts, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to bring, just I'm going to bring Andrew that. Thomas in. Sorry, Gaynor. I'm just going to bring okay. Andrew Thomas in very swiftly. It's really encouraging to hear, and you know, my own personal experience. I lost my mum through dementia, and seeing some of these things come come to fruition is um, is really powerful. 
Ryan won't say, but you know, we're going back four or five years when we knew something needed to be developed to support people living with dementia, cognitive impairment. It probably didn't exist, and and it's not an easy place if you don't engage with people with lived experience to to co-design that. And I think Halo and Ryan and his team have done done really well. I went to doing doing similar things, but it is a different way of working. And I think beyond the lived experience, working with the right partners from Alzheimer's and Carer Centre and yeah. Bob has helped yeah. to create a lot of these things and join join the dots, I think. So, you know, and, 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 and starting small and trying to scale up, Ryan may not have mentioned, but I think they've secured five years of lottery investment, including for more learning and more insight to further develop oh, that. So, that. So where there are gaps, I think, we should be brave enough to try and build the things that fill them best. And I think by working yeah. with local people, you know, it's, it's not always the easiest way, but I think it is the right way to, to create things. Ryan has panels of people that attend the programmes. They help shape, refine and improve those things. So, you know, that, that is a living process, really, for some of this. So, yeah, re really pleased to hear you, Gaina. Thank you. I just think that courses like this bring people together and um, some people on the courses have uh, prior knowledge and others are just there because all somebody's mentioned that, that this course is available and I am so just so passionate about helping people, well, sign course people myself then to, to all what, what is on offer in our area. Um, and it's surprising that so many people don't know. Um, I, as I said, I volunteer. I, when I left working uh, in the Talbot Hospital, I was a secretary in Talbot, and uh, dementia was such a passion that I, um, I in, enrolled with the volunteer scheme in Glanbead Hospital with Glenda Jones there in Glanbead, and I was placed in in my state hospital on the ward there and seeing the difference that it makes to people there is, is absolutely incredible and I'm, I'm just so passionate and I'm hoping that people I can encourage people um, like you all are involved for to make such a big difference to people with dementia it's seeing people come alive when um, you hit the right spot to bring somebody who's just lying in a hospital bed and you just hit the right spot and that person comes to life in their own way. It's, it's just unbelievable the, the, what yes. you can do to help these people. It's just, yeah, it's just hitting the right spot. Yes, you're 100% you're right there. I know um, full well how wonderful those brief and fleeting moments are when somebody yes. you're caring for comes back and you get to see those moments and that, that does make it all very much worthwhile as well because it is rough it is very very difficult to to care for anyone um with any sort of um uh, um infliction on them at all medically and um certainly i know firsthand as i've said um vascular dementia as it was with my father and also with my my aunt his sister and my grandmother so it's, it's rampant in our family as well is really yeah. difficult and you cannot work running on empty so to have this support and to hear that it's working is really really heartening for us because that means that our our officers here are getting it right and that's a big deal that's a big thing so hearing you say that and hearing ellie say that there's been improvements today have been really heartening to hear actually it's good and it yeah. is it's a big boost for our officers because that means we're on the right track so i'm i'm very very grateful to hear from you both that that's been the case i'm just going to bring claire um marchant back in and then i'm going to bring ryan in gainer thank you okay yeah only briefly chair um there's a lot of engagement work at the moment um which is being led by the regional partnership board specifically around dementia and i'm sure they would really welcome um, gain us involvement in, in, in that work. Um, you know, dementia is a huge priority for us, both locally but at a regional level as well. And we've got a, a dementia coordinator 
who works with Councillor Gebby as the chair of that board to make sure that we're out there actually speaking to people um, like Dana and making sure that's informing both the regional plans and services that are being developed as well as, as the local. So I'm sure there can be a connection made into that work as a consequence of the conversation this morning. But there's lots all over Twitter and, and all the social media platforms at the moment about how to get involved in that engagement work. Definitely. Thank you. Um, I, I'm presuming afterwards, Councillor Gebby, you can get in touch with Gainer and, and organise that. And, yep. If Gainer's... Yep. OK, fabulous. Ryan, can I bring you in, please? Yeah, just to give a little bit more information um, in terms of what Councillor Lewis was asking, um, in terms of where um, Gainer heard about the programme. We do have, we've counted, you know, over 30 professionals who are raising awareness and referring in to this, this programme. Um, that comes across uh, via dementia wellbeing support workers, the Alzheimer's Society, the local community coordinators, Babos, navigators. So, um, you know, hopefully we, we're really working in a joined up way there and ensuring that, you know, people don't fall, fall through the net in, in that respect. Um, I think perhaps another point that Gaina made was about the importance of the replacement care and how vital an aspect that has been um, to her ability to access, access this programme. Um, and, and certainly our experience is that capacity for replacement care is vital, but gaining the confidence in regarding the quality of replacement care is, is also key. We're trying to develop that and collaborate further um, via the integrated customer services um, uh, manager for the East network, whereby we would hopefully have some support from the dementia care workers, you know, really to provide that, that professionalism, that experience and that that knowledge, um, you know, at a, at a, at a at the next level on i guess for for replacement care so um and and gainer has mentioned a name there earlier of, of somebody who's within that team who has really been supportive as well um and just just the other quick point to make is we do have a digi story and a case study which is available which describes some of the the challenges and the experiences of uh unpaid, unpaid carers um in in some more some more detail so I would be happy to share that if uh, if anyone would like access to it. Fantastic. I think that would be lovely if you sent that in. Um, we'll see about how we get hold of that from you as well, Ryan, because that would be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So, members, does anybody else have any questions at all for our invitees? And it's looking like we might have no more questions. So with that in mind, okay. I'm aware that our invitees were with us for just the first hour. So I would like to thank both Ellie and Gaynor. And it sounds like we've got a, an extra invitee there on the line with Gaynor. But thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining us and, and for telling us your experiences, because it's, it's, it is very heartening, actually. It's lovely to hear that you know, we are on the right track, we are getting there. And, you know, the, the offers are being improved quite significantly recently, and it's working. That's what we want, because um, it's so important. There's no point in us putting things in, in place, and them not being the right things. So it's really good to hear that our officers who do work exceedingly hard, exceedingly hard at this, I know, um, are on the right track, and that, uh, we are helping people where that help is required and needed. So thank you so much for your um, contributions today. It's been lovely to hear from you. Thank you, Gaynor. Thank you, Ellie. And okay. if you wish to leave the call, you may. If you wish to join us, you can stay. But um, I'm just going to call a very short two-minute interval so that if anybody wishes to leave the chamber um, and get back to wherever they need to go, that's fine to do that. So we'll just pause for two minutes, if that's OK. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, thank, thank you. you Good, Good morning, everyone. Cheers. Bye.